Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Naruto Was Justice League's Fire Shadow. If you guys enjoy this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel after watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So now let's start this video. The Naruto's new home. Ring. Ring. Crack. Naruto yawned and looked to see the now crushed alarm clock on his bedroom drawer, and shook his head. Apparently his reflexes made him smash his clock hard again. Even though he spent money of buying customized reinforced clocks, his strength usually broke them. The now in mass of metal and components was the fourth watch this month. Maybe I ought to start investing in clocks made from steel that are stop this bad habit. The blonde got himself out of bed and looked at the calendar nearby, and saw that now was the time for him to go and meet up with Carolyn. His boss had been asking for him to show up at the office to get his latest paycheck, get a new order list from her. And also she wanted him to hear some news that she felt was for his ears alone. He wondered just what his older female boss wanted from him this early, since it was technically still 3.30 in the bloody morning, the office usually opened at 8. But Carolyn had asked, rather demanded that he come to the office to get his paycheck today, and also report in for some news that she felt was important enough for his eyes, only before he reported for work today. His job in Winter's Publishing was to write his stories to be published and provide some input to the rest of the working staff, since he was a part-time worker, and not full-time like the others. He did not hang there in the building for too long as he worked there for at least a few hours. As he got himself out of bed, he also moved to the bathroom and decided to take a good shower. Once he was done with bathing, he moved to dry himself up and get some breakfast into his stomach first. He took out some still cold but fresh and well-preserved tuna and some rice, got the rice cooked, and then got to making some instant ramen. He wished he could go and get some takeout ramen, but he decided against it, since the ramen bar he usually went to only opened at the morning, and he knew that now was not the best time since they were rather sleepy after serving customers for hours until 9 in the evening. He soon went to the tuna, took out his knife and channeled his wind chakra into it, and began to curl up the fish into well-portioned slices for the rice. He also took out a carton of fresh milk and poured himself at least a glass full, and cracked open a bottle of fruit juice, namely orange, and poured in another glass worth of the drink. Once he got the rice done, he had two of his kage bunshin roll them into rice balls by hand, and had them place the balls down, and began to eat it with the newly sliced tuna, as well as the now fully finished ramen. He took gulps of the cold milk and orange juice, and enjoyed his food for all it was worth, and since he spent some good money on getting good food, he made sure to buy only the best. It took him at least 30 minutes to polish off his food, and with that done, he decided to get refreshed up for the meeting. One thing he learned from his married life was to always look good and at least smell nice, and that was the reason why he took a good amount of time in his bath, and after breakfast brushed his teeth as well as tried that mouthwash stuff. This stuff had a fairly interesting bite in his tongue and mouth, but he did not mind, and once that was out of the way, he got to dressing up. He put on his frog boxers as before, and then grabbed a black shirt with stripes of orange in them. There were three stripes were on the shirt two on the shoulders going down to the front, and the four strips on the sides of his stomach from front to back. He liked the shirt and since it fit his mo well enough, he took it months before. The fact that his boss did not mind it and his colleague in the publishing house did not rattle him about it made him happy. He then placed on his black pants with two orange lines on the sides going down from his hip to his legs. He then wore a pair of comfortable cotton black socks and a pair of black shoes with orange flame patterns. To complete the whole set were a pair of fingerless gloves and he then styled his hair a bit to not take the usual spiky look. With that out of the way he then colored his hair in the same shade of red as before, and used a bit of henge to hide his whisker marks. He looked himself over and smiled at himself. He might not be in high fashion in some areas, but this was LA, and thus there were different views on fashion here. As soon as he was done, he got his kitchen cleaned up and got his SUV keys. He decided to scan the area with his sage mode, and once he was sure that his place was only surrounded by the usual plant and animal life he got out of his house, and got into the vehicle given to him by Batman. Later, approaching the Waynetic Warehouse. Naruto drove the SUV and listening to the music of one of his favorite Japanese music artists. There might not be a lot of guys who listen to the stuff here in the US, unless they spoke the same language, but he was one of those who bought them. And since his world's language was definitely similar to the Japanese language, he had no problem enjoying the music himself. The disguised shinobi moved through the highway and decided to keep to the required speed limit, so the last thing he wanted was to get the attention of the LAPD this early in the morning. The police were not a problem to him, but he was on the side of the good guys, and these guys were the good guys. He did keep in mind that on occasion he ran into corrupt cops and officials in his time in being the Hokage of the city of LA, so not everyone in the LAPD were good guys. It took him some time to finally arrive in the warehouse, he got the special access card and slid it into the card reader, and soon the warehouse opened up, and in he drove. 
Once he got inside, he parked his SUV and locked it down. He then took out a scroll and placed the keys on the open scroll he placed it in storage, and kept the scroll in his own backpack, that was also strapped twice to him by invisible chakra strings, to make sure that thugs did not try to rip away his pack. Along with the keys to his vehicle he also had his gear ready for use if he had to don them and go to work as the Hokage. He then got out of the warehouse and soon headed deeper into the city, he checked his watch and saw that he had time. He headed for a nearby car park, snuck in and as soon as he was on top of the highest part of the car park, used his chakra chain to begin moving quickly over the city. It was risky for him to do so since he did not have his disguise, but he made sure to stick only to the shadows, and when user police helicopters were near, he quickly got down to the ground in the shadows and walked the rest of the way. The blonde then decided to drop by a nearby deli, since he knew that apart from Carolyn, there was another person who was willing to be there in the building this early in the morning. And the guy certainly needed the grub since it was going to be a while before he was going to be relieved by the afternoon shift guard. Winter's Publishing Building The blonde soon made his way to his working place, and he was eager to meet up with Carolyn, and once he got his check, he could hang out with his boss for a while before he left. As he only worked part-time, he was not needed to stay the usual late hours like most people, and while Carol and the others in the building at times asked him what he did, he knew that they were not going to pry into his life too much. He had just taken a bus from the deli shop and head to the place where his workplace was and decided to walk there. The building was very tall, not too tall, but it was a good place to work in and well kept as well. So far the parking area was devoid of cars, with the exception of his boss's car. Naruto yawned again as he quickly took out his pass key and opened the door with Franklin Morris, the security guard greeting him inside. The man with dark brown hair with streaks of silver hair, was a former soldier who got hit in the thigh by a stray round in battle, and had the bone in his thigh splintered by the bullet that tore through his leg. The only reason he still had his leg was due to the fact that several of his buddies managed to get to him and save his life and get him to field hospital, and the surgeon there saved his leg as well as his life. Had they delayed any longer, he would have bled to death. He had been taken back stateside to heal, and when he was out, he had been given an honorable discharge from the military and a pension. The pain from his wounds still bothered him, and he had no other option but to work as security for a number of years. The pain was pretty bad, and he was thankful that he did not have too many cases to deal with. But the bosses Frank worked with before finally let him go, but not before he had to deal with being stuck in dead-end assignments. It was hard to find new work after that years later, and he felt that he was not going to get far, until he got hired by Carolyn, and managed to get enough money to have a second round of surgery to finally ease the pain with the help of a chiropractor. Hey there Sage, you're pretty early. Yeah, boss wanted to see me about something. Franklin nodded and allowed the blonde in, truth be told, the old man likes Sage, the name sounded a bit off, but he did not mind. The guy was definitely different from the regular guys his age, since he usually spent time chatting him and brining him good quality coffee and food. Not the cafeteria crap he got back in the office, but actual good quality grub. And the coffee was special brew since it certainly did not taste like instant coffee, plus he had some pretty good stories to boot, and he certainly was good when it counted. So, you planning on working on some of the new books you got cooking up? Yep, and also to see what's the latest word from our respective boss lady, on how the books are doing, and also get my pay for the half of the month, she already here by any chance. You got it man, she's been here an hour already working on the reports, plus looking over on the new scripts and storyboards coming in from the other writers. I don't know how she manages to handle being in that office as long as she does, but at least it's only once in a month, not every damn day. The Carol's a good boss and she pays well, not like those cheapskates I used to work with. Naruto nodded at that and took out a package. You ate already Frank? Nah, managed to get me a half-eaten bagel and some cold juice from the fridge back home when I left for this early morning shift. Didn't have any time to get me a proper breakfast when I got here, and it's only been at least 30 minutes. Naruto nodded and gave the man the package. Inside was several sandwiches, one was filled with lettuce, roast beef, cheese, mustard and ketchup, another had chicken with lettuce, ketchup, another had ham with cabbage, cheese, and ketchup. Next to the sandwiches were a pair of apples, and a small container of vegetable salad. The blonde then got out a container that was used for temporary drink storage with a spoon in a sealed container taped to it, and gave it to the grinning guard as he smiled. Here, managed to make a stop at that favorite deli of yours, ordered the usual, and made sure to have them make you a good stock of chicken soup with herbs. Figured that the food there will be what you'd needed for the rest of the day shift. The man laughed and smiled warmly. That's why I like you Sage, you know how to treat people good. Still, I really wish you didn't do it too many times. Not that I'm not grateful or anything, but I feel like I'm taking advantage of you, and that's just wrong. Naruto shook his head and replied. No worries Frank, I respect you, and besides I only do this when you get the early day shift, and at least that's once a month. Both men laughed and the blonde moved back into the building, and he headed to Carolyn's office. 
Carolyn usually did this once a month, and that was because she wanted to make sure that she had all the files and reports the house had been taken care of, so they did not have to worry about it at the end of the month. As he walked through the building to head to her office at the fifth floor of the building, he recalled just how he had run into the 30-old woman who was currently his boss. It had been on one of the times he had started writing stories, and had made his very first script, and since it was adult material, he decided to head out and find a publisher. He had planned to go and get himself a paper to find a publisher, and had been disguised to do so. Along the way, he had an encounter with Carolyn Winters, who was dealing with a band of obvious thugs. The copper-haired woman was definitely very attractive, but instead of panicking when she was surrounded, she quickly talked back at the lewd comments, and even showed that she had taken self-defense classes. She even managed to force a man to lose his knife. But he came in when one of the men was about to take out what appeared to be another knife, and the other took out a gun. He quickly took the offensive and grabbed a small bit of metal, charged it up with chakra, and threw it like a shuriken. The weapon buried itself deeply into the man's hand, and he quickly moved in and attacked the remaining thugs. He had beaten them up just as Carolyn smashed the face of her last attacker into her car, and the two looked at one another. She smiled at him, and the disguised blonde soon learned that she ran a publishing house that her family founded. He decided to ask if she did not mind taking in his work, and allow him to work part-time for her company. Carolyn was curious about that, and they soon headed to her office in this building, and when they got there, he gave her some of the itcha itcha scripts. Needless to say, due to his youthful looks, Carolyn was a bit surprised and intrigued by the work, and asked him if he was actually knowledgeable of what he wrote. He recalled just what he had said then, and it had surprised Carolyn a great deal before he realized his slip of the tongue. Instead of being annoyed by his words or anything, Carolyn decided to give him an ultimatum. If he could prove that he could actually do what he had written in the story, she would consider publishing it. If he could not back up the content of his story, then she was going to turn it down. He had used a tiny amount of Karama's chakra to find out if she was kidding, but he was surprised to learn that she was not kidding. He asked her once more if she was serious, she replied that since she was not planning to marry, and was not against the idea as long as there was consensual agreement between them to leave it at that, then she was alright with it. Needless to say, his experiences with his wives back in his world came in very handy, and Carolyn was very impressed and decided to publish his work and accept him as a part-time employee. Carolyn was not a soft woman as he began to work with her and her staff however, she was strict, serious when it came to her work, stern and demanding. She was not above removing an employee who was not performing well and causing trouble. And she was not going to be easily swayed by anyone until she was shown that they had done their quota of work the way they were supposed to. She was a slave driver when she was angry and determined for them to meet a deadline, but she was not a full-blown tyrant. To her employees who had legitimate reasons for not performing well, she was kind and respectful to them, as long as they were telling her the truth of things, to those who were sick, she gave them their pay and gave them sick leave, to those who had to resign for legitimate and serious reasons. She made sure that they were well compensated, and had the appropriate support if it was warranted. All in all, she was tough and serious, but fair and respectable, as long as everyone knew where they stood. He was a bit different with her due to their rather unique working relationship. But she was just as stern and strict with him when she gave him a deadline, and more than once she had given him quite an earful for being tardy and later without proper reasons. As he got to her office, he knocked on the door, and soon he heard the woman speak in response to his actions. Come in. Naruto opened the door, and he smiled a bit as he saw the woman who was his boss, but she was busy looking over piles of papers. She wore a long-sleeved light white blouse with a red vest. Her long copper hair which was very straight was currently in a bun with a bolt of light cream white cloth to tie her hair to a ponytail. She looked up and smiled a bit as she saw him. Naruto could not help smirk at the way that she was smiling at him, and she spoke to him not long after once she placed down the papers, and he was done locking the door to her office. Even if they were the only people here, there was no reason to not take some precautions. Nice to see that you managed to arrive early Sage, I was beginning to wonder just when you were finally going to get here. Sorry about that Carol, but I needed to get some food and supplies for Frank. I take it that Frank was happy. Very much so, I made sure to include all his favors. That's good to know, Frank's a good man, but now that you're here, we can talk about your newest paperwork. Plus you might want to see just how much your book series had been earning, despite the fact that your little disappearance had left some backlog books for you to fill up again. Naruto sat down in front of Carol as she gave him a folder that contained the reports, and when he got a look at it, he whistled a bit. They were earning well and while the books did not become bestsellers, the readers certainly enjoyed the material that he was able to make for their enjoyment and pleasure. The disguised blonde liked that fact that he had good readers and fans, and they were not limited to the LA populace, there were readers in Central City, Metropolis, and even Gotham. He could not help but wonder if the readers included a certain speedster, a super-powered alien, and a certain brooding dark knight. That made him laugh, and that made Kara look at him with a raised eyebrow, as she was busy looking at her own stack of reports. What's so funny? 
Heck, just thinking a bit on how the men and women this report find the books, I sure as hell hope no kids read this accidentally. The copper-haired publisher smirked at that and agreed with her part-time employee and so far, one of her company's more interesting writers. That's one thing I can agree on, and so far, we have gotten good comments, though you can bet we have people who complain. You can't please everyone. You got that right, now then, about your payment for the month's sage. Oh? I hope my lack of writing time has not been a bad blow. Carol grinned a bit and took out a large envelope, and showed it to Naruto who recognized it as his pay for the month. Even though he was only part-time, the success of the Itcha Itcha book series had been enough to convince Carol to pay him a full-time employee salary. For which he was thankful and so was she as he did good work when he was given due compensation. Here's the pay, but I think you need to earn it. And how pray tell am I supposed to do that boss? Naruto watched as Carol got off the chair, and she was wearing white stockings and a white skirt that was able to go a bit below the knees. The woman smiled at the way Naruto looked at her, and then placed the envelope into a box to keep it aside and sat down on the nearby couch, and replied in a very amused but authoritative fashion. I think you can figure it out. Naruto sighed in amusement and went to join Carol, and as soon as he sat down, the blonde kissed her on the cheek, and she smirked as she kissed him right back on the lips. Originally there was supposed to be a short lemon section here, but since the administrators in the site are now in the process of purging lemon stories from the site, I removed it. I understand the reasoning of the administrators in their move, though I personally still feel that using the ma rating system is better. Ah well, might as well make the most of the situation. Carolyn was pleased as she gave the disguised blonde a deep kiss, and as they parted, she moved to the pile of clothes there which was hers. She placed them on the nearby table, and soon moved to take out the envelope from the box, and gave it to Naruto as she wore her panties. The blonde felt the thickness of the envelope, and looked inside to see crisp and fresh dollar bills, all amounting to a full $10,000 in hundreds. It was his half-month pay and he would get the rest at the end of the month, Naruto smiled at his boss who he had more than physical and professional relationship with. Cash on hand as before boss. You really don't mind handing me liquid cash at all do you? The woman moved her hair side while placing on her bra, and she replied. After the kind of work you do, and your way of making it up to me for the times you've been missing, I think giving you that kind of payment is enough. Besides, I happen to like you a lot Sage. Just not enough to tie the knot with right. Carol sighed a bit in amusement and nodded. Yeah, though if this keeps up, I might change my mind, you might look like a teen, but you certainly don't act like it. And you certainly know how to make a woman think a bit more about the idea of committing to a more serious relationship. You don't happen to have a condition that stunts your growth by any chance age. Naruto thought it over and shook his head. Nope, not that I know of, I am a healthy and sound young man, though we both know that after all. Carol smirked and got on her skirt, heels, blouse, and vest, as she soon sat down and spoke again to him, as Naruto also got back to wearing all of his clothes. By the way, I managed to send your friend Masashi's manga designs and storyboard to a company in Japan a few months back. One of the producers in the company was a friend of mine when I went to Japan to handle some book selling contracts, so I asked him to show it his fellows. That also included the first chapters you and you made as well. And they happened to like it a lot. That got Naruto's attention a good deal, he has seen some of the anime shows before, and he admired the way they were made. Really, just how much are we talking about here boss? They liked it enough to make an animated series out of it. Really? Carol nodded in agreement. Really, they liked the concept you and Masashi cooked up so much that they decided to make a series out of it. And from what I have been told, they had begun to make the first few episodes plus a pilot episode for the show. They also took the time to contact some very interesting people to contribute to the series itself. Here's a list of set people for you and Masashi to look at. Naruto took the list from Carol who was now back to looking every bit the stern but fair lady boss, not the seductive and sassy woman he had just been intimate with an hour and a half ago. He looked at the list and he could not help but raise his eyebrow, and spoke to the copper-haired woman who was his publisher and boss, as well as some time friend would benefit. The list was nothing bad, just rather surprising to him, since it was a list of band aims that he knew of rather well. The list of Japanese bands and artists included Hound Dog, Asian Kung Fu Generation, Little by Little, Flo, Sanba Masuda, Stance Punks, Shinakeru, Hearts Grow, Akabashi, Rhythm, Orange Range, Raiko, Misumiseru, Tia, Kayaputin Sideratum, SP, No Regret Life, Anirogu Fisu, Amadori, Chaba. Orsuka Bando, Sabaton, Yuki Soya, Tube, Maria, Nobudiknos Plus, Long Shot Party, Aikimono Gakari, Joe Noe, Hatamoto Hero, Neko Touches the Walls, 7. Tasuka, The Crow Magnons, Homemade Kazoku, Aludo, Question, Masahiko Kondo, Surface, Halkali, Deparade, Azu, Kishdan, Supercell Super Beaver, Domino, Akimoto, Tatalfa, Himenwe Unlimits, DJ Ozma, Nishino Kana, Kamiji Yusuf, Puffy Animi, and Simo. All of whom played good music in Naruto's mind, since he started downloading their songs into his laptop when he heard of the island of Japan. 
He had yet to go there himself, but decided that with things as they were, that kind of trip can wait. Uh Carol, these are the names of my favorite bands and artists from Japan, and I even have their CDs in my collections, why are you giving me this? The woman smiled a bit as she adjusted her business vest and replied as she took up a cup of hot coffee that a coffee maker had just made and she had poured down into her cup. The bands and artists were contacted by the studio and looked at some copies of your friend's work and they loved it. They wanted to contribute songs to the opening and ending sequences of the episodes and even if the studio made movies of the series. They wanted to send you a list of their names and the songs they have in mind. Since you already have their albums in your collection, I think you can pick the best songs from the albums. The address to the studio is there too. If your friend approves of the music choices, then you guys can talk it over with the studio via internet, and that should get things started. Naruto grinned and placed down the list, since he had their CDs already, he would have no problem picking the right music for the anime series. If the pervy sage ever found out that his beloved student and godchild had made his book a hidden reality, he had no doubt the perverted old man was going to be smiling down on him. If he wasn't already smiling at the fact that he had made a fortune with the new version of his perverted stories. The blonde looked at his boss and smiled warmly at her as she sat down on her office, looking all the way a businesswoman would look, as he moved forward to kiss her on the cheek once more. Thanks a bunch Carolyn, me and Masashi owe you big time. The copper-haired woman smiled a bit at that and replied. As long as you keep your promise to me and write good stories for the series you and I started, I will consider your debts to me paid sage. Anyway I hope that you can get your work done since we've got a lot of mail, most of whom come from people who like your work. Any negative mail? Carolyn shrugged as she handed him a folder of said mail. Though the usual as in the report, but not that many here in LA, they love the stuff you cook up after all. You want to take their letters. Nah, I don't need to read those, if they don't like my work, then that's their right to say so, and I'll leave it at that. I'm old enough to know that answering letters from people who hate your work is not going to work. Now if they had some proper advice, then I will listen. Carol sighed as she looked at the watch and saw that it was going to be sick soon, and she looked at Naruto. It's about time to get the office officially open Sage, you have any other concerns before you take to your other activities? Nah, I'm all good, though I would like some of that good brew you got there boss. Carol nodded and gave him a mug for him to drink coffee, once that was done, Naruto drank his coffee and enjoyed it while chatting a bit more with Carol, before he finished his drink, and joined the others who were now coming in. He was not going to be in the office for very long as he had other matters to deal with, all of which had to deal with him doing an early run through the city as the Hokage. Later. Naruto was currently moving through the city in his Hokage gear, and was making his way with both his chakra chains and his Hiroshin to cover ground. Once he had done his rounds in the building, he soon got out and headed off to get ready for his rounds in the city, before he called it a day and headed back home. He was not yet feeling up to a night patrol, but would do so at a later date. The city was definitely different even though he had been here for a while now, and he enjoyed the way it looked. The buildings definitely were different from those back home, even making those in Kumo look primitive, and the people were just as diverse. He looked at one particular direction and could not help but smirk a lot more as he knew that location well enough. The adult movie section of Los Angeles, he had no doubt that place would have equated to heaven for his perverted sensei Kakashi and his godfather Jiraiya. And would have given Sanade more than enough excuse to pound his godfather into the dirt. That naturally meant he too would be given a thorough trashing by the others, if they ever saw him looking in that direction for any reason. A pervy sage would have loved that. The blonde's attention however changed as he moved over more buildings and spotted as he got to the lower floors a car running away like crazy. The sight of police cars also convinced him that there was definitely trouble, and he quickly decided to give chase on the vehicle. He turned to spot a police helicopter nearby, and no doubt he was already spotted. For now however, he was not going to interfere unless it was really bad. And so far the police were doing alright, even managing to punch the tires. That is until the driver turned the screeching and spark spewing car around, when actually opened up with a shotgun on the cops, and it seemed that he was not alone, as three more came out with guns blazing. That caught the cops off guard, and Naruto knew that now was the time to get involved. The police car behind stopped as the police got out to fight back, but the blonde saw one of the cops take a hit in the leg, and was bleeding on the street. He rushed in and appeared to the man who was crying out in pain. Ah. Shit first day on the job and I get shot. Hang on man. Wait the Hokage. Naruto did not respond to that as he quickly got out a kunai and cut the man's pants to get a better look at the wound. It was deep and a single hull told him that it was a pistol round. He had managed to familiarize himself with guns early on, and knew that he had to move. He looked at the man through his ceramic mask and spoke in English. Hang on, I'll get the bullet out and heal your wound. How the hell do you plan to do that? The cop got his answer as Naruto got out one of his painkiller pills, and told him to take it now. The cop wanted to argue, but with shots ringing out, he did not have much choice. He took the pill and the medicine worked quickly, and soon the pain from his wound dulled. 
Naruto then took his kunai and cut the wound a bit more, as two more police cars came in with backup. The other cops saw him and thought he was harming their fellow cop and were about to respond, but the cop's partner shouted. Let him do it, we got other matters over here. Naruto was grateful, and soon he got the bullet out, he soon recalled his medical jutsu training, and summoned his chakra. The police nearby were surprised to see the Hokage's hands glow green, and they watched as their partner's wound was actually closing up before their eyes. The cop Naruto was treating was just as stunned as they were, as his wound was literally healing and sealing itself upright before his own eyes. Once that was done, Naruto nodded and spoke to the man. There you go, wounds healed up. How? I'm a ninja so I'm not telling my secrets, just going to say that not all of us are assassins. The cops went back to dealing with the armed thugs, and soon two including the shotgun wielding driver was out of it and dead. Another was wounded and apparently passed out, but the other one managed to get away, Naruto quickly pursued the last one, and was followed by the cops and the police helicopter. They soon spotted the man grab a young girl from her mother who was screaming at the man for taking her little girl. Let her go. Shut up. The girl screamed, and the man turned to face Naruto and the cops as the lead police officer shouted. Let the girl go. Screw you pig. Let me leave or this little brat gets it. Naruto did not like the implications as the terrified girl was trying to remain brave, the mother was crying and pleading for the release of her daughter. The sight tore at the Hokage, and he was enraged that this thug was willing to use a child who by all rights was an innocent. He quickly decided to cut loose, and he used his jutsu. The thug was surprised to suddenly find not his hostage, but the Hokage, and he saw with even greater surprise, that the child was now where the masked and armored ninja freak had stood only moments before. He was not the only one as the police and the mother were also shocked at the sudden switcheroo. He did not have time to react as Naruto quickly knocked the gun away from him, and he quickly took out a senden from a hidden area of his armor, and charged it up with his chakra, and turned it into lightning chakra to work like a stun gun. He did develop the skill to use lightning chakra techniques, but since it was not his elemental affinity, he had less control over it than most. That was why he had to watch the amount of energy he dumped in, or else he might kill the guy outright. The attack worked as the man screamed as he was stabbed in the leg by the sharp needle, and he began to shake, as the lightning chakra hit him hard, and sent him to the floor writhing in shock. Naruto quickly moved away and took the gun from him, as the man was still out of it, from the effect of Naruto's attack, as it was like being hit by a tosser. Get him? The police got to the man and quickly cuffed him, as Naruto looked to see the little girl run to her mother in tears. Mama. Karen. The two hugged one another, and he smiled underneath his mask, as he looked to see that the cops had secured the last thug as he dropped the weapon. He then used the Shushin Jutsu and left as the cops, and the reunited mother-daughter pair saw him leave with a swirl of leaves, as the only mark of his passing, as well as some smoke. All of which was recorded by the police helicopter that was overhead. He soon appeared at least two blocks away, and Naruto turned around to leave and see what else he could be dealing with later. The blonde hoped that the little girl was going to be alright, and she would recover from the ordeal. She was a civilian and had no place in a situation like that, and that was why it bothered him a lot more than he let on. But he laced those thoughts aside for now and soon moved on, using his kunai wire and chakra chains, to move through the high-rise buildings, along with the Hiroshin kunai that he carried with him. It was not going to be long before he spotted another problem to deal with, this time it was a much bigger concern as he moved towards what appeared to be a construction site. The crane nearby was carrying a heavy load of materials, all metal beams, and it was swaying very unnaturally. And right below were a large group of people. As soon as he got there, his fears became reality when the sound of snapping metal was heard, and he quickly responded as he used his favorite jutsu. Taju Kagebunshin no jutsu. He and his Kagebunshin quickly arrived as the metal came crashing down towards the people below, and all of them were soon unleashing their kunai wire, which was chakra reinforced along with the original Naruto, summoning his chakra chains to catch the metal bars in a lattice of chakra. Reinforce wire and chains. The people below, construction workers turned and gasped as they saw the Hokage, and his Kage Bunshin as Naruto spoke to them in English. Guys. Clear away, I can't hold those things forever. They did just that, and Naruto soon began to lower the metal bars down as best he could, and managed to get them close enough to land safely, though he was strained by the sheer weight of all that metal. Once the clanging was gone, the blonde removed his army of Kage Bunshin, and once more left the area, much to the surprise of the people he had rescued, and the people who had seen the whole affair. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.